Hello one and all, welcome to a Galaxy Man Show interview show. Uh, so for my very next guest is this incredible cosplayer, uh, 13 Doctor cosplayer, um, who cosplays the 13th Doctor, the amazing 13th Doctor, uh, Katie Haynes. So yeah, I'm going to welcome Katie Haynes into the live now to have a chat with Katie Haynes and yeah, talk Doctor Who with Katie. So yeah, let's add Katie in and here we go. Hi! Hi, how's it going? Good, how's it going for you? Yeah, really good, thanks. I just want to say first up, thank you so much for taking the time to join my show. It's such a pleasure having you on today. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. So, to people that don't know who you are, if you can give like a bit of backstory about who you are and what you do, and then we'll dive right into the questions. Yeah, absolutely. So, my name is Katie Haynes. I am a uh, 13th Doctor cosplayer. I've been a Whovian since... Um, you know what? I'm going to have to Google this because the episode that got me into Doctor Who, um, oh, no, but it was, wait, was it? Oh, no, 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 no. I have been a Whovian since, um, I want to say 2008, 2009, but my first episode ever was The Empty Child. Yes. And I think I think that shocks a lot of people that I stayed on after that. But I fell in love with it, um, and I've been a fan ever since. And when Jody, I was. It's funny because I found out about Jody at a supernatural convention. I was waiting in line to go in to see Jared and Jensen at their convention at their at their panel. And it was so funny because my boyfriend, who lives in England, sent me my uh, uh, sent me the notification that it, it had been announced that Jodie was the new Doctor. And I just shouted to everyone, "Hey, everybody! The new Doctor is a woman!" And um, everybody applauded. It was it was a lot of fun. And then usually, what happens is I go over to the UK and watch the show with my boyfriend. Because of COVID, that did not happen. So. We binged it together over the internet, and I kept thinking about Jody's. What got me into cosplaying 13 was actually not the show at first. It was Jody's first um, pandemic message. And for some reason, I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it, and I was... I, I don't know what happened, but it just took off from there. And and binged both series. I love her. And, yeah, I just started cosplaying her. Awesome. Well, we'll dive right into the questions now, mm -hmm. Eddie. Uh, so, with Doctor Who being such an incredible franchise, what, what, what do you like the most out of Doctor Who? Like, the monsters, the, the threats that come to Doctor Who? Or, like, just what, what do you like in general about Doctor Who? I love um, I love the doctor and I love what the doctor represents. The doctor is I call the doctor the light of the universe, the hope of the universe because it doesn't matter what form the doctor takes. The doctor is always um, I do what I do because it's right. I do what I do because it's kind. And particularly, my favorite doctors, uh, jo uh, 13, 11, and 8. I call them Team Tea Time. They are, they are positivity incarnated. They are, um, they, they find joy in the smallest things. Everything, even though they know so much, even the smallest things make them happy. A cup of tea, uh, a butterfly, a sofa, these, um, a jammy dodger. These are, care they, they know when they have to make the tough decisions and it hits them hard every single time. I get the feeling that the, the doctor never... Everything stays with them. Every adventure, every loss, every win, every um, every action. You know, ever since I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit, but ever since um, the Time Lord Victorious, they've never forgotten that. So even even if 
you know, the the doctor can be, whether the doctor can be very grumpy and grouchy with um, 6 and 12, or um, kind of at the same time very, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get hate for this one, but um, at sometimes very full of themselves, like 10. Every doctor has their pluses, every doctor has their minuses, but they are still the doctor. They are still that light of the universe. And when it comes down to it, the doctor will always be kind. And I love the doctor. And I love what the, the doctor, you know, every, if, 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 if someone was like, okay, you have to pick your favorite companion, don't make me go there. But, you know, the, we become better people through the doctor and we see better things about ourselves through the doctor and through the companions and uh, you know I'm just I, I will I will never stop saying this Martha Jones needs more love because Martha Jones love. is the doctor who saved the doctor yeah totally agree yeah <laughs> I so hope that, that got that, go, go ahead I'm so sorry yeah so on to my very next question about the companions and the journeys that we see from the companions what companion storyline have you liked like, like the most during the Doctor Who run? Like it can be classic, it can be new Who, any storyline. I will I will go I will go on record and say I am more of a new Whovian. That is not a diss for the old Whovians. I've just I've never my introduction to old Who was really an adventure in space and time, the BBC uh, documentary doc docudrama. Um I guess my I love Donna. I love Donna. I think I, I wish they hadn't done to Donna what they did. Um, I love the I love the growth of the relationship of the pawns, even though we gotta address the elephant in the room that I'm I'm not gonna Amy um essayed the doctor. Let's let's put that where it stands. Yeah. She she attempted to do that. But she grew, and her ending, my God, um, I love, I love her arc. I really like Clara's arc. I don't yeah. much, li much like. Um, I'm just. There are no bad doctors. There are no bad companions. There are just bad writers. Even though I don't know why, everyone always bashes on Adric, who I don't know. And there's a big Finnish uh, companion who everybody bashes on, Raz, Raz. It's, it's a companion of eight, and everybody bashes on that companion, and I don't know why. Um, but um, I would definitely have to go with Martha, and I would – Martha, Donna, and um, – I wish Graham had gotten more. I really do love Graham, and I love Ryan, and um, I ah, oh, I did. Uh, I wish that as I love her. I wish Grace had been a companion. I know yes. her her passing kind of drives a lot of the season, but I just adored her. Awesome. So, on to our very next question. So, if you could travel in time and space and go to any time period, where would you want to go to and why? I feel, um, because I am very aware of the impact that time travel could or could not have, the butterfly effect, you know, you don't want to mess with your own timeline, there are two places where I would want to go. Um, I would want to go to the opening of Disneyland because I'm a huge Disney fanatic and I would want to watch, I would want to go back in time and I would want to watch a filming of the Muppet show when Jim Henson was alive. Yes. That Love would, um, cause I know, I know people, I, I, where I would want to go in time is very personal to me. And, you know, those were the creators of my childhood. So I would just, you know, I would want to see them. I would want, I would love to talk to Jim Henson. Um, but even then I know, like, I can't change what comes to pass. Yeah. Awesome. So I'll tell you the next question. So 
with being like an inspiration on TikTok, because you're on TikTok, to people that haven't seen your TikTok, truly sensational. Love the way you portray the, like the 13th Doctor. Your 13th Doctor is truly inspirational. It really is. Um, Thank you. And I just want to say, you inspire so many people on TikTok. Doctor Who Whovians, a lot of people, you really inspire people. Um, and I just want to say, what like favorite skit of yours have you enjoyed making on TikTok? Um, oh, there's definitely, first of all, thank you very much. I did not in, when I started doing this, I didn't intend to, I didn't know it was going to become this crazy. Um, my favorite ones, well, first of all, I've got to give a shout out. It's actually my one year anniversary with um crystal leo the lion who plays leo in the tardis fam she duetted me and i feel like she is a huge reason why i took off as far as i did um and everybody in the tardis fam ross jamie hannah um let amy all of you guys um thank you i have to give a very special shout out to the first time I I did a video and I was like oh I can do comedy from this um and the demon named Jeff who if anyone who's watching if you are Sasha he is the an incredible Sasha Juwan master like he is spot on perfect and there's a skit that um he did where he comes I I I don't know why, but it's like, I see you don't have a lifeguard here at your beach. I'm not at a beach. This is a bathtub. I couldn't. That is one of my favorites because it took me so long to get it. And it was anytime I can do comedy, anytime I can do comedy, anytime I can make someone laugh, anytime I can address something that needs to be addressed, whether it's, um, you know, a, a toxic relationships, um, helping someone during a panic attack, anything where I know I, I've, um, I've helped someone. Hey, it's good to see you. Um, that means the most to me. That really does. Awesome. So I'm sorry, next question. So what season of Jodie Whittaker's have you enjoyed the most? Season 11 or season 12? I I really enjoy season eleven. I think twelve is the stronger season, and I'm I. Her her deliveries. My favorite episodes of hers really have to be. It takes you away. She is phenomenal in the haunting of Villa. I I will never be, be able to pronounce that. Um, I always think of it as the best episode. Um, because because it's her just um. I think her, I, I know that a lot of people hate this episode, but honestly, if you take out the last 30 seconds, I think she is phenomenal in Orphan 55. I yes. think, I actually think that that is one of her strongest episodes. And I think it's a phenomenal episode episode i think that if they had just taken out certain elements it would have been better and it and praxius should have been like praxius should have been let's say orphan 55 should have been season 11 and praxius should have been season 12 um demons of punjab classic rosa classic yes. um and honestly while it is problematic, I don't think the Timeless Child... Now, I'm, I, let me come at this as a new Whovian, and let me come at this from my point of view. The thing that is the saddest about the Doctor is the fact that we won't last. Humans won't last. The Earth won't last. Even everything in the galaxy will fall apart, except for the Doctor. The doctor will. All, the doctor is at the end. At the end of time, the doctor is kind of like death. There will be the doctor, and there will be death, and that will be it. So the doctor will be will carry everything that they have traveled through, and seen, and hurt, and loved, and lost. So to know that the doctor will go on forever, in a way, that's amazing. And that's heartbreaking. We will have, and, 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 
you know, there will be, there will be every single doctor. There will be the war, war doctor. There will be Ruth doctor, which BBC, give me a Ruth doctor series. I need that. And the second she came on, the second she came on and she reached out, there is a, there's always a definitive moment for me where I'm like, that's the doctor. Um, for eight, it was, um, I'm with my father. We're laying back in the grass. It's a warm Gallifreyan night. For nine, I think, oh, God, nine, nine, it was when he traveled with, and I have to remember her name, um, because this was every, you know how everyone has that definitive character death in Doctor Who that they never, that they never, um, that breaks their heart, that always stays with them. Mine is Jade from the Forest of Chem. Yes. She, she, um, and it's amazing, and, and it's why I can't, on the one hand, the episode of Cassandra's, I cry at everything, but that the, epi the final episode of Cassandra where she di actually dies in her own arms, that broke me. But Jade, I have never gotten over. That one hurt. And actually, and, and speaking of deaths, that made me want to kick the TV. Wow, BBC. Thank you for scarring me for what you did to Bill. Because the Cybermen oh, are like... Yes. I the was Bill like, storyline was... Yeah. I, and, and, and I did not have... Now, here's a funny thing. I didn't know. I know that when, when it... Cause, because I was watching it later on in the, in, the, um, in the year. I didn't know that John was coming back. So when that reveal happened... I had to think, I was like, wait a minute, who is this guy? I know you, who? And I literally, I had, oh my God, I had the spy fall moment. I had the, oh, and that I, and again, Bill, I love Bill. I, she is a perfect um, companion for 12. I adore her. Um, but for and uh, oh god, I I go off topic on these the entire no, time. It's when um she takes thirteen's hand that I was like, there you are, there you are, and and I need so I need a series with her. Well, um, what was the question? Oh, um, it's eleven or twelve. I love Eleven I because I love kind of there is a little more fluff there. Um, but I love 12 because of how much Jody shines. Um, and I'm just going to say it. I love fluff episodes. Um, I know a lot of people don't. Um, but again, I think that a, Series 11 does not deserve the hate that it gets. Should it have been reworked? Absolutely. There, um, I feel like Ghost Monument could have been stronger. I still love it. Um, I feel like had let's say hypothetically had um the battle of had tim shaw been like a mid-series villain and then you know what no this is how this works this is how this works because i love this um let's take the battle of i can't remember the planet put it in the middle of the series have it takes you away put it at the very end um, as a, and you make it a two-parter. So she goes through the portal and she sees the frog. And the soul attract is a frog who talks like grace. My own form is endless, but this is a form that, but this frog is a form that delights me as it once delighted grace. And you just, you end, it goes right into credits when she says, there's me thinking the universe had no more surprises left. And then it's a two-parter. And then the, the, the end of the, that two part, it, the second part is the fam trying to get the doctor back while the doctor is exploring this universe and who she is and her relationship with the soul attract. And then it ends with, I wish I could stay because you, they build that up and she wants to stay because she, the doctor wants to be friends with everyone. She wants to have this endless adventure because there will be there will never the the universe is 
endless. There will be endless adventures, much like Star Wars. There will be endless things to explore, endless things to see, endless friends to meet, endless adventures to have. I'm getting emotional. I'm sorry. No, okay. no it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Well, I, um, for my very next question, to throw this in, into the mix for you. Yeah. So if you could write your very own episode of Doctor Who with Jody as the Doctor, what like would you want to like what what episode would you want to write for Jody and why? Can I? <laughs> okay, so I have two. Um, I would want to do. I actually have two. I have two. Um, one of them is because I would want to do it. I would want to be. I would want to be a character. I would want to be a featured character. But that's me. That's being selfish. Let's take me out of the equation. So Doctor Who tackles um, very, very difficult topics. And I would want to do an episode where she actually comes across, she, she arrives in an area where a lot of people are found either going crazy. And this, I, I want to give a shout out to Supernatural because Supernatural kind of gave me the idea for this. Um, I would also just love to see her have an episode with Jim Henson because I want to see the, the doctor interacting with Muppets. Let's be honest, that would be incredible. Um, she she goes into town and a lot of people are, are like arrested. They're found going crazy or they're found um, in jail. Um, and the doctor slowly starts finding out that these are all people who have um, been abusers in the past. They're not the victims. They are... And, she comes across someone who has kind of created a safe space and um, is making people feel very loved and safe. But what you find out later is that the, the person actually has kind of a venom-esque solar parasite attached to them who, she doesn't know this, but her own anger at the people who are caught, who are who are attacking victims and are being, you know, assaulters, has manifested into something that is going after the abusers. And on the one, and the doctor is very conflicted because, on the one hand, uh, these people are, you know, they're going insane. They're 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 alive, but. Um, the the person has the speech when she realizes the truth. Who else is going to do anything? You think these people are going to get justice? Have you looked at the justice system? Maybe I, I didn't know that I was doing this, but maybe I'm doing the right thing. And it's very much this battle of... And of course, at the very end, she gives it up. But the whole point of the episode is... When is there going to be justice for people who have to live with what has been done to them their whole lives? Because as we know, um, most people don't get justice. And most people are not, I, you know, I, I've never shied away from it. I've been a victim of emotional and mental abuse. Nobody cared. You know, it's only recently that people actually do start to care. Some people still don't care about people who have been SA victims. Um, so I would like to see Doctor Who tackle that in a way that in every way um, is there to say we believe the victims, you know, we believe the victims, but is not done in a, and, and that's where, you know, you can re think about things like Orphan 55 and other episodes where it does feel very exploited. In, in some way, it feels like exploited. It feels like it's shoving it down your throat. It's got to be written in the right way, in the way that says, okay, we did our research. We know what we're talking about. We understand that this is, and even Yaz can come in and say, can, and, and it's so, you know, the doctors and both Yaz say, you're right. This is, you know, but you're only, you're only one step away from killing these people. And, and it's that, well, do they, after what they have done, do they deserve to live? And, and it's, 
you know, it's that question of can we, you know, when, when can, for, for actions like that, is forgiveness deserved? Can forgiveness, can forgiveness actually happen? And when are we going to put the victims above the abusers? And yeah, Peter, it's, you know, Yaz points out these, you know, the backlog of these cases, she's actually, you know, she's, and, and even the doctor agrees, she's doing something that is helping people and that is getting justice. But, it, you know, is this the right way to do it? And ultimately, ultimately, there is no, like, she isn't the villain and neither is the parasite. And eventually, you know, she lets go of the parasite. There's kind of a, um, a symbiotic release. And, um, but it, it, it shouldn't end on a happy ending. It should end on the doctor, rec you know, the doctor knows. The doctor knows that this, you know, nothing about this situation is okay. You know, and maybe it can end with this very bittersweet moment where, you know, she gets in the TARDIS and she says, and, and Yaz asks, did we do the right thing? And the doctor just looks at the console and there's no answer. So, yeah. Oh. <sighs> Gave me chills right there. Jeez. Well, so for my very next question. So with season 13 coming up uh, late this year, later this year, what are your hopes and expectations for season 13 of Jodie's Doctor? I want, you know, I... I want more focus on her. I feel like there was not enough focus on her. We got more focus on her on 12. I need more of, I need more of seeing her, of seeing the doctor, of seeing, um, I think one of the things, one of the main issues that I had with Capaldi was I didn't see that. I only saw the doctor in very brief snippets. Otherwise I just saw this very grouchy old man. The first time I really saw Capaldi as the doctor is, and I know a lot of people forget about this episode, but it's the, um, the field trip episode where the little girl finds the TARDIS and she knocks on the TARDIS. And the first time I was like, Oh no, 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 not a child, not a child, please. I don't want to see this doctor. And he, he just stands up and he looks at her and he gets down on her level and starts talking to her like a person, not like a child, like a person. I was like, we're okay. We're okay. He's the doctor. He's the doctor. He's the doctor. We're okay. I need to see more of her being the doctor. I want more scenes like, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I got way too emotional. Um, I want to see more of her, uh, um, you know, much like the scene in It Takes You Away. I want to see more writing of her, like I saw in Orphan 55, really having those doctor moments. Um, I want to see more of her relationship with Yaz. Um, while let's let's just put it out in the open i personally believe the doctor can either be pansexual or asexual um and yes that can apply to his uh, the doctor's relationship with river we don't know what went on now river is definitely a very sexual person yes. but um we don't know what went on between them um which is totally fine you know either way but i would love to i would i feel like every doctor has that love interest nine and ten absolutely rose 11, River. 12, River slash, gonna throw it in there, Missy. I would kill to get a Missy in 13 episode. I would kill to get a Missy in 13 episode. Um, personal wants, I'd love to see 13 and K9 together. Yes. Sweet. If there, God in heaven, hear my prayer. Anyone out there in the universe, hear my prayer. I need more Sasha. I need more Sasha Master coming back. Give me him back. Give me him back. Um, and I, I really have no, I, I just don't, um, and, and, and this is neither good nor bad. I don't really know a lot about the new companion who's coming on. So, um, I see asexual, but panromantic. Yeah, I can accept that. I can accept that. Um, but I, yeah, I really, I want to see more of the doctor shine and find out more about herself, whether or not the master was telling the truth with the timeless child. Um, is the master actually the timeless child? I fully believe there are other versions of the doctor that we 
I have not seen yet. But, um, and that is one of the great things about Doctor Who. And, and uh, yeah, the, the, the Time Lords gave the Doctor a whole, uh, Eleven, a whole bunch of new regenerations. So it's, Doctor Who can be endless, um, which I think is both wonderful and heartbreaking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So, on some of your really next questions, so what would be your like favorite doctor's quote that the doctor has said? Oh, I've got a couple. Um, there's no point in growing up if you can't be childish. Sometimes, um, I do what I do because it's right, and above all, because it's kind. Always be nice, but never fail to be kind. Um, that's my favorite 13 quote. We're all capable of the most incredible change. We can, um, we can embrace the change, but still stay true to who we are. Um, we all, ch 11, we all change when you think about it. And that's good because you gotta, you gotta keep moving forward. Awesome. I feel um, like, I, I feel like 11... 12 has my favorite quote. 11 is probably my favorite doctor of all time with Jody in like a, if, 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 if there's like, okay, so if you're giving out medals in terms of like whose doctor is number, if you have, you have 11 getting the gold, you have 13 getting the silver, but it's like what they did in China. There's a little bit of uh, jade in the middle um, for it. And then you have, um, Eight with the bronze medal and with um, the J. Although I hate saying it's like okay, um, eleven is the perfect ice cream sundae. Uh, Thirteen is like the extra, the almost extra extra perfect ice cream sundae, but they left off one cherry. I don't want to pick a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, to end this to end this interview off. What are your hopes and expectations for the 60th anniversary? If you could have anyone, like any companion, any like monster return for the 60th anniversary, what would you like to see for the 60th? Oh, you are going to, this is like going to be a, this is like going to be a everything pizza um, yes. with barbecue sauce and onion rings on top. First of all, you get, you get everybody you can. And we're talking everybody. You get um, you know, you get Jody, you get Peter, you get, um, Matt, you get David, if you can, you get Chris, you get Bradley Walsh, you get Ruth, you, you literally, if they're alive, you get them in the studio, you make this massive, same thing, oh, I'm gonna go the extra mile, you get big finish actors, you bring in everybody, you literally, you get, oh, sweet, Holy God, my kingdom for a scene of eight and thirteen meeting. I'm not. I'm not kidding. You get everybody in there, and you get every master. You get John. You get Sasha. You get uh, Michelle. You get. You bring. You bring everybody back. You highlight the ones we've lost. You. Uh, we. You know. Maybe. Maybe we see um, a shot of Elizabeth. Um, you you get K nine in there, literally, just have fun and rock the world with this. Yes, yes. You go even the comics. Yes, the comics, the novels, Big Finish. You get everybody in on this, and literally, you just you you. This is, this is an instance where I say, when you have a big thing like this, go big or go home. And then for shits and giggles, just, sorry for swearing, um, no, set it in Disneyland. Just to, because I'm a Disney fanatic, set it in Disneyland. Why not? I don't know. Go, you, do, you, you, when you 60 at this, you end game this. You go Avengers end game. I better see everybody coming out of those portals. And I mean 
everybody. You and you have you have the Chris Evans Avengers assemble moment. Yes. My heart is like this now. Like out the window right there. I, I feel like I just had an emotional roller coaster and I don't know what just happened. <laughs> my 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 nerd face just went out just the window just there. And I mean I you get every we're talking oh my god and a shout out I have to do this. I have to do this. You get one. I want a scene of even like the Pat Noster game kicking ass. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, the Pat Noster game. I love them. They are amazing. They are yeah. So I just want to say thank you so much, Katie. It's You're welcome. Been such a pleasure having you on the show today. Uh, do you have any like last final thoughts for the viewers that have tuned in? Um. Stay safe. Stay awesome. I'm sorry. I'm literally like, I am emotion. I am like emotionally drained in a good way. Yes. Um, just always be nice. Never fail to be kind.